In this video, we're going to be talking about voicing and what that concept means as it applies to the clarinet. So this is something that I hear a lot of questions about in terms of what the idea of voicing is when you're playing a wind instrument. And for the clarinet, it's really about what shape is the tongue and the oral cavity in when you're playing, sort of like the internal invisible parts of the embouchure. And I really like to relate this in terms of vowels and speaking because that comes more naturally to us than sort of, you know, sticking this instrument inside your mouth and blowing through it. So I approach this again from a vowel perspective. And if we say each vowel, A, E, I, O, U, they each put the tongue in a different place in the oral cavity in terms of high or low and shape the oral cavity differently. And as you, if you do that again, you'll probably realize that the letter E puts the tongue in the highest position. You can actually kind of feel the tongue touching the insides of the top teeth. And that's usually the position we aim for when we're playing the instrument. And that gets us a very centered sound and it helps the air move really fast through the instrument because it's sort of compressing the airstream smaller. And we can hear that when we play. I'm gonna play an F major scale using an E tongue position. <laughs> play that same scale with an O tongue position so the tongue is going to be much lower in the oral cavity. It's actually really hard to do that after you've been practicing with a high tongue position for so long. But you heard a big difference in tone quality and intonation. With E, we've got a good, nice focus sound and steady pitch, whereas O, it's, it's really wide and spread and kind of nasal sounding. And I think that's one of the biggest things with tone quality is where are we putting the tongue? And it's one of the easiest things to fix in theory, but in execution, it can be really difficult because when people start to play this instrument when they're young, it's so awkward and the tongue is just kind of kind of just flopping around inside the mouth uh, without really any thought of where it's positioned. So it requires a lot of self-awareness to address this. So it's something that if you can really make sure it's sort of the, one of the first things you talk about with embouchure is that, that students are putting the tongue in the right position. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the tongue stays in one position the whole time. We want it to, but as you become more advanced, there are subtle changes that we make to help each note sound best. So I'm gonna play an altissimo F, followed by a throat tone B flat. And when I play the F, I'm gonna have a one voicing set. And when I play the B flat, I'll use the same voicing. So the F sounded nice, but the B flat was really nasal and certain sounded like the clarinet had a cold kind of, just kind of like ah. But if I change, the, the way my tongue is shaped for that B flat, we'll get a much nicer sound. Had a lot more focus and center to it. But if I do that same tongue position that works for the B flat on the altissimo F, it's really tight and really pinched. So you have one basic tongue position, but within that there's all sorts of variants to help each note sound similar, but I really try and think of the same letter each time. So there's a couple ways you can work on this. The first, I like to pick a note in the Shalyamo register. I usually start with C. And without changing fingerings, change the way the tongue position is shaped to help us get those higher notes. <laughs> If you watch right here, I'll do that one more time. You kind of see the larynx changing its position for different notes. Not so much from Shalyamo to Clarion, but when you get into the altissimo, you kind of really see this drop.
And when I'm doing this, I really like to think about the way I'm directing my air. So maybe for Shalimote, I think kind of straight out. But for Clarion, you actually have to think down. It's kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. But then for Altissimo, it's angling up again. And that helps put the tongue in the ideal position for each register. And you can practice that on C. You can do that on any note. Yeah, although I'll warn you that the further away you go from C, the more difficult it becomes at a certain point. can't get the fourth one there and going down and once you feel comfortable with that a second exercise you can do and you can kind of do these in any order is to start a note in the upper register and then take away the register key and see if you can get that note to sustain. So I'm gonna play a G above the staff and after it sustains, I'm gonna release my thumb and see if I can get the note to keep going. And the note sustained. If my tongue's not in the right position, if I'm not voicing this correctly, that note's not gonna keep sounding. kind of fall down like that. So that's a second option. You can do those in either order. Sometimes I'll have students do try and do the overtones first. Sometimes I'll have them do sustaining without the register key. A third option for practicing these, take your swab, kind of wad it up, stick it inside the bell of the instrument. You get a closed tube. You kind of turn the clarinet into a, um, sort of a bugle instrument if you finger that low E where all your fingers are down. So if you try and blow it into the clarinet with a swab in the bell, you get only a few notes. And you can actually play some of the bugle calls on this. And practicing that is going to help you get used to how your tongue can move to change registers. So that's probably the most annoying out of all of these, but all three of these done in any order can really be helpful ways to practice your voicing. I actually remember doing uh, the first one we talked about as an undergrad student in a practice room and then a professor was giving an ear training exam. They actually told me I'd either stop doing that or leave because it was bothering the people taking the test. So you might wanna just kind of not do this near an ear training exam, I suppose. But all three of these exercises exercises are really good way to practice your voicing and it's going to help you get a better sound and play more evenly across your registers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out on social media and thanks for tuning in. Have fun practicing all of your voicing exercises.